Welcome to Pixel Perfect, a Windows app I created for making Perler beat art. Let me show you how it works. In the middle here, you've got your image that you've loaded. On the left is your palette. And then on the right is all of your controls for manipulating the image. First, we have zoom, which allows you to get closer to each pixel. Um, this doesn't actually change the number of beads or pixels. It just allows you to look at it a little bit closer. Next, we have the color adjustments, red, green, and blue. You can see when you add red, it makes it a little bit more red, green, blue, and so on. Pretty self-explanatory. Then you have brightness, contrast, and saturation. Brightness makes it brighter. Contrast makes it both brighter and darker, depending on the areas. And saturation adds more color or removes color. The next section is dithering. When I'm working on photorealistic portraits, like this picture of Inigo Montoya, sometimes dithering helps to blend sections that are, are all one solid color, like his hair. It's pretty much all black, and if you want to get pull a little bit more detail out of that or have it mix a little better, well, this isn't doing it now. But you can see dithering kind of blends the pixels together so that you don't have these giant blobs of one color areas. It works better in some images than it does in others. Sharpness is like focus control. It'll take a blurry image and make it a little bit more focused, so you can see the the edges pop a little bit harder on his face when you turn up the sharpness here. Scale allows you to actually change the, the size of the image. So if this is too big and you don't have enough beads to complete this giant image, you can actually scale it down and it'll make it smaller for you. You lose detail when you do that, but then it allows you to, to control exactly the size that you want your final product to be. Usually when I scale it down like that, I'll add a little bit of sharpness to try to bring back some of the detail. You can also flip the image, which will mirror it left to right. Let's scale that back up so it looks a little nicer. Here you can select which brand you want to use. So if you're only using Perler, you can turn off ArtCal brand. If you're only using ArtCal, you can turn off Perler. And then that updates the palette over here to only use the brand of colors that you've selected. Both brands have both pearl and translucent colors, which are either semi-transparent or mostly transparent. Um, and then when I'm doing my art, I, I try to avoid using those beads because they, they're not as consistent and they're not solid, they're see-through. Um, so with these checkboxes, you can turn off those translucent and pearl colors, or you can turn them on and, and then they get added into the mix. In this final section, you can choose your pegboard size. And what that does is it creates these dividing lines on the image for the size of each pegboard. So the Perler standard pegboards are 29 by 29. So you can see this image is segmented into 29 by 29 chunks. So you can see where your pegboards will be divided. Uh, you can choose a bunch of different pegboard sizes. You can turn the grid lines on or off to have a more accurate view of what your final picture is going to look like. So this will disable the grid lines. You can see the image more cleanly. And then there's also an option to show your pixels as beads, which gives you a little bit more accurate render of what it's going to look like when it's done. You can change your grid color using this button right here. So if your, if your project is primarily black, black, black grid lines aren't going to be very clear. So you can change it to white or gray, something that's easier to see. And then you can change the background color or the color that shows, you know, in between the gaps of each bead. So if you were going to paint a canvas or something to glue your final project to, uh, you could change it to the color that you're going to paint your canvas. And then that gives you a little bit more realistic look of what that's going to look like. Let's talk about this left side, which is the palette. So over here, this summary over here is going to show you how many total colors you're using in your project, how many beads are in your project, and how many of each bead you need to use. 
The checkboxes allow you to turn on or off individual colors. So if you don't have any of a specific color on hand and you can't put that in your project, you can uncheck that and it will automatically try to find the next closest color for all those beads that were set to the color you just unchecked. Once you have your colors looking good for your project and it's time to start putting beads down on the pegboard, what you can do is select an individual color from the palette over here. And this works best when you have uh, your square pixels rather than beads. And click on one of these here. It'll highlight all of the light gray pixels with black and everything else you can ignore. And if you zoom in, you can work on an individual pegboard here. And if you change your grid lines to something that's not exactly black, it'll divide them a little bit more clearly. And then you can see exactly where you're supposed to put your light gray beads. And while you're working, if you're working on a cluster of beads over here and you need to go from this cluster down to this bead, there's a little ruler tool that you can use by clicking and dragging. So if you click on this bead here and connect it to this bead here, it'll tell you you have to move right three and down two to get to this bead. So if there's a huge gap between an area that you just finished and the next area that you want to work on, you can go from here down to here, and this will tell you exactly how many beads you need to move to get to this pixel. Then you can click anywhere to remove the ruler. When you're done working on light gray, you can click this show all colors button, and it will take you back to the fully colored view. And then you can move on to the next color. And you just continue on with each color until you're done. For larger projects, you're probably going to work on them for multiple days and you don't want your color settings to get lost or messed up. So one thing you can do is once you have all of your color dials set just the way you want them, everything, all of the bead colors selected that you want in the project, you can save your project as a PBP file, which is a Perler bead project file. And what this does is it saves all of the settings and all of the colors that you've chosen, the, the brightness, the contrast, the, the zoom, the, the palettes that you've selected. It saves all of that in an XML file so you can open it next time you open the program and all of your color settings and everything will be exactly the same. This button over here uh, allows you to remove all these color controls. Once you're done messing with colors, you really don't need that area for much other than looking at what bead you're currently mousing over. But if you don't want to look at this whole thing and you want more space to work, you can click this button here and it'll move it over. And then to zoom in and out, you can use control key plus mouse wheel, and you can still zoom in and out, even though that zoom control is hidden in here. Sometimes for bigger, more complex projects, you want to print out a pattern that you can put underneath your clear pegboards. So to do that, you can export a black and white PDF pattern. So this allows you to export a PDF. And when you open that PDF, it will have a separate page for each pegboard and for each color. For me, rather than printing out 250 pages of paper and putting each one under my pegboards, I made a little Raspberry Pi system that connects to a monitor that I set flat on the table. And then I can put my pegboard on the monitor screen and page through the different pages of the PDF. And then I can complete each page, basically painting by numbers where the black pixels show up underneath the clear pegboard. If you wanna just save the image that you're working on, you can export it as a PNG, which will just give you an image of whatever these pixels are based on the color settings that you've chosen. Pixel Perfect is free and open source. I created it for myself but I want to be able to share it with other people that are interested in making Perler bead projects. You can check out the entire project at nostalgicpixels.com. There you can find a link to download Pixel Perfect. It requires Java and only runs on Windows for now. I look forward to seeing the projects you create with Pixel Perfect. Thanks for checking it out.